Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp for iPad Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp for iPad. Today, we're going to talk about the Scale tool. The Scale tool is a great tool. A lot of people think that it's just used to make something bigger and smaller, but because of the way the handles are on there, you can actually drag stuff and distort it. You can resize multiple items together. It's a great tool, and we're going to talk about it right now. Okay, so I have a couple of items here. Uh, I, I have a, this is loose geometry, it's cylinders, loose geometry, this one's in a group. Um, so a couple things you can do here. If you start the scale tool and have nothing selected, the first thing you pick on, once you select it, will get highlighted and show up with the scale handles all around. This is the way scale works. It's gonna give you all these handles that you can grab and stretch the selected geometry. Uh, if you want to do something like a bunch of loose geometry like I have over here, what you want to do is come in and select it all first, then hit scale, and you'll get the same thing. Like I said, if you, nothing is selected, then as soon as you click, it'll just grab that first thing. If you want to have multiple items selected, same thing. Come in here, select first. So in this case, I have the loose geometry here and the group. And then when I hit scale, you'll see I, I'll get those, those handles, those, those scaling handles are all the way around everything. So generally speaking, the, the best way to use this is probably gonna to be to pre-select and then hit scale. There's a couple modifiers over here. Uh, one is scale about middle, one is scale uniform. We'll touch on those in just a second. First, I wanna talk about the different ways to use it with the different methods of input. So I currently have a pencil. My pencil is set to just draw mode. So when I'm in just draw mode, what I'm gonna do is touch onto a handle, Move and release to scale. Pretty simple. Uh, so something to note is depending on the handle you click and drag or touch and drag, you're going to have scales going to react differently. So you can see there when I, it, it actually, when I drew, drug, when I drawed, when I, <laughs> when I pulled straight up, it distorted this geometry and made it longer this way. Uh, if I grab the side one, same thing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take it and actually just stretch it out this way. That's what happens when you do any of these faces of the, of the six sides. If you grab one of the corners like this one, it'll actually always, by default, it will scale uniformly. So that will make sure every direction is the same. If I grab one of these corners right here, it's on an edge, it'll let me distort in two directions. See, so I can stretch up or I can stretch out, but it's not uniform. If I want to force uniformity, that's where these, these things come in over here. So if I hit scale uniform, now when I pull up on this top one, you see the whole thing scales the same direction. That's what scale uniform is. Scale from center means whenever I scale, it's going to go from the center out. So if I pull up this way, it's gonna get longer both directions. So good options to have. Nice, nice to be able to flip those right on as you're modeling. It's gonna change where your final geometry scale ends up and also where it grows or shrinks from. Just to show, let's hop in here and switch over to click, move, click. Works very similar, except I'm going to hard press on the point, then bring it up. Oops. I bumped my mouse there, so it jumped. So you can see that, hard press. So to, to drag it down, I'm just gonna grab a handle, hard press, and then release or hard press to, to finish. Now you can do this with touch. I've had a little bit of a hard time with touch. Uh, Primarily because my head's like a foot back from the screen so it doesn't get caught by this overhead camera. Um, so I have a hard time telling exactly where my finger's touching. So here's a trick that I figured out for this. Well, I'm going to take my finger, put it on the screen, and as I move around, you can see that see the little gray circle it's following? If I can just move that around and hover over, I'll see the, the diagonal line light up right there. If I like go at that point, it has grabbed that, that handle. So now I can come in here and long press to pick up and scale using my finger. Pretty easy to do. And then finally, whoops, finally we have the mouse right here. So if I bring my mouse in, uh, this is going to allow me to just grab any corner, click and drag, release to scale, to finish the scale. So pretty simple, uh, it works just like that. Now there's a couple things I said we can talk about. We talked about the modifiers here. But uh, something else, some other things to talk about is one is scaling to negative. So I can actually come in here and scale past zero into negative space to flip something. This works obviously better on a non uh, 
symmetrical item, but it lets you flip things the other direction. Another thing you can do, this is kind of cool, is if I come in here and pick, for example, this, uh, this disc right here, just the top of this cylinder, and if I hit scale right now, it'll let me take that and stretch it. And look what happens. It's actually stretching the attached geometry. So when I do that, I end up with, you know, not a cylinder anymore, but scale will take that geometry and as it changes size, the connected geometry will go with it. So it's a really cool command for creating some unique shapes that you might not be able to do if you're just drawing geometry to begin with. I'm sure there's other things we could have gone into a scale, but this is square one. We're covering the basics. Uh, if you like that and you want to go deeper into scale, let me know. We could probably do a part two video, part two videos. Um, but right now, that's kind of the basics of how to use it. Uh, it is a great command for taking geometry and uh, changing size. Obviously, that's what the name implies. But remember, you can use it to distort, too. You don't have to have everything just growing or shrinking about its middle, though that is a pretty cool option to have and kind of one of the reasons scale exists. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, please leave us a comment down below. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.